Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Our destination for today's show is a very cool shop in Norman. It's called Stash. This eclectic little place is at Main and Porter in OU's hometown. They're located in a building that might be a century old or so, part of Norman's old automobile alley. They sell everything here from Oki apparel to candles, gifts, cards, you name it. The best part, almost everything is Oklahoma made and oftentimes made by hand. And it's a hands-on experience that has a lot of people visiting our next location. Not to mention the big renovation that's happened at Leonardo's Children's Museum in Enid. I had a chance to go recently and I have to tell you, it is pretty impressive. <laughs> Kids are just naturally curious creatures. Leonardo's Children's Museum in Enid is a mecca for those kids to see, touch, and experience things that will spur their imagination. We are so excited to welcome everyone to our new and improved, renovated and expanded Leonardo's Children's Museum. And now kids have even more things to do and explore at Leonardo's. Now they still have Adventure Quest outside. But inside, everything has changed. Leonardo in the bag. Yes, it is. Everything on the first floor is brand new. We have uh, several feature exhibitions. Our two-story power tower, which tells the story of Oklahoma energy and Oklahoma's role in powering the world. We have our brand new Critters Clubhouse on the west side of the museum. There are about 12 species of animals, animals children really don't get to see every day. After the power tower, you're going to see our tinkering exhibit, which opened in 2014, and it includes a carpenter shop. The carpenter shop was this young lady's favorite activity. I liked the tinkering, and I was making a pegboard. I was going to hammer a bunch of nails in and then make a pegboard to put the string on. Completing the first floor, you'll find a new toddler's area for children under five with hands-on activities, and there's a traveling exhibit area as well. On the second floor, we have one new exhibit so far, and it is our medical exhibit sponsored by Integris Health and Integris Bass Baptist Health Center, and it includes a giant operation game, child size, uh, carts and medical supplies and exam tables. Um, the kids get to dress up in their costumes and be a doctor or a nurse or a radiologist or whatever they want to that day. And so they're learning about the human body. And at the same time, they're seeing that a trip to the doctor isn't scary. On the second floor, you'll discover what they call refurbished favorites, but this fall, Leonardo's will enter into phase two of their complete renovation, and the second floor will have all new exhibits. There's adventure at every turn at Leonardo's. They can find it, extract it, move it. Being here is a tremendously fun and learning experience. My favorite thing is the pets. I like how the pets feel. Leonardo's is like tons of fun. I like to see animals. Oh gosh, we loved it. I brought my class this morning and they've just, they're loving it, having the greatest time ever. It's fantastic. So we're happy it's here in Enid. We have lots to offer for people who are thinking about a day trip to Enid. It's certainly worth the drive. You get all day admission inside and out. If you want to leave and eat lunch somewhere, that's great. Or if you want to bring a picnic lunch, that's great. And so plenty to do for visitors to Enid. So I'm telling people, don't take my word for it. Come see for yourself. If you're looking for great destinations like Leonardo's that are certainly worth the drive this summer, you need a copy of the 2016 Oklahoma Travel Guide and we'll send you a copy absolutely free. Just head to our website, travelok.com and click where it says request free brochures. And another must-see spot for any music fan this summer is just over in Muskogee. Julie Chin takes us to the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. The Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame adds the beat to the heart of Muskogee. Located in the Depot District, thousands of tourists stop here each year. Merle Haggard is probably our number one guy through the door. We have done tours from Japan, Moscow, Russia, Belgium, South Africa, South America, New Zealand, Australia. And you ask him what brings you to America, and I thought a lot of them would be saying, you know, Route 66 or something like that. 
They can barely get this out. Okie from Muskogee, Merle Haggard we come. Merle Haggard's worldwide impact was a catalyst for the museum's opening, and he was the first inductee in 1997. There have been more than a hundred honorees since, all with ties to Oklahoma. And that ranges anywhere from uh, Native American tribes, who we consider some of the first musicians in Oklahoma, to the, the early, the jazz greats from the 30s and on up. Uh, obviously lots of country music honorees, but also a lot of rock. You'll find a little bit of everything in this museum, and curator Ronald Boren will take you on a fun, fact-filled, personal tour. Yes, he begins with this yes, wall of fame featuring yes, all inductees. Here, and we tell him about Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. A lot of tourists from Texas wondering why this picture is on our wall up here in Oklahoma. And a lot of them don't realize that the four brothers moved to Tulsa in the early 30s. And we have to be gentle with that because they're very defensive about Bob Wills down there. All inductees have been to the museum and most donate to the collection. You'll see items like Toby Keith's cowboy hat and Hank Thompson's western shirt. New gear from up-and-comers is in rotation too. We have a rising star that we like to honor the, the up-and-coming artist. Uh, John Fulbright is one of those recently, the Swan Brothers. All-American Rejects, Hinder, so, and they've all been here and presented us with something that we can show, and so we love to honor the, uh, the young ones and the up and coming. Gold records cover the hallways. There are about a hundred from music manager Jim Halsey's private collection. Reba McIntyre, the Oak Ridge Boys, Lee Greenwood, Don Williams, Merle Haggard, Tammy Wynette, Clint Black, uh, Dwight Yoakam, it's just absolutely incredible. Uh, the amount of artists that Jim Halsey was able to manage. The museum is also home to costumes and instruments, including signed guitars from greats like Eric Clapton, B.B. King, and J.J. Kale. Right here is Roy Clark's banjo, uh -huh. and if you can ever watch the reruns of Hee Haw, you will see Roy playing this uh, banjo right here. Neat. There's lots of rare Merle memorabilia, too. We've got a, a guitar Merle presented us at his induction in 1997 that we're very proud of, and uh, his hat, his, uh, a lot of his albums that we have here. The one in particular we're proud of is the album he recorded just two blocks away called Live from Muskogee. That was uh, October 10th, 1969, one CMA and ACM album of the year. And uh, so that was the iconic, which had the single Okie from Muskogee on it. Not only will you find a great museum here at the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame, but you'll also find a huge music hall. They have concerts here every Thursday night, they tape a TV show here, and they also hold special events. Most of the time for the Thursday nights, it's a, it's a walk-up charge. Uh, on special shows, we do advanced sales. You go to our, our website or our Facebook page is usually the best place to see what's the most current thing happening. While it's free to tour the museum, donations are suggested. Plan on spending an hour or longer at the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. No matter what type of music you're into, it's likely something here will strike a chord. In Muskogee, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. If you're ready to dig deeper when it comes to Oklahoma music, you need a copy of our brand new Rhythm and Roots brochure. Head to our website, TravelOK.com, to request your free copy. It's full of information about Oklahoma's own musicians. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. People come from Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, all over the country. Truck drivers have spread the word about our hamburgers. Some of the best burgers can be found in southern Oklahoma. We'll show you where. It's not a big box store, but we have things that the big box stores don't have. Yeah. One more reason to shop local. Wait till you see what you can find at this stop in Comanche. Best chicken fried steak and steak. And the pork chops are wonderful. And I... I, I love their cinnamon rolls. Plus, home cooking that's worth the stop. It's all ahead right here on Discover Oklahoma. Great travel tips anytime. Like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Oklahoma's new 2016 Outdoor Guide is full of the state's most spectacular activities and destinations. And when you use our new mobile app, some of the pages spring to life. So find your Oklahoma state of mind. Order your free guide at TravelOK.com today.
Welcome back. We're at a place called Stash in Norman. This is a very, very cool place. And I happen to pick up this coffee mug, and it's made by a local pottery instructor, a middle school instructor by the name of Dan Harris. Very well known, not only for being a very popular teacher, but also <laughs> throughout the region for doing wood-fired pottery. And uh, this place is full of some of his uh, work. You know, if you want some uh, coffee for your for your mug there, okay. how about Bison Brew? Named after, this is locally roasted, and it's named after some great places that I love. This is Robber's Cave Roast mm -hmm. and Black Mesa Espresso. I'm going to be walking There are all kinds of great summer souvenirs if you're looking for something to pick up. Absolutely. And speaking of summer, if your summer trip happens to take you to one of the popular Oklahoma lakes, we've got a place that you need to check out. Lisanne Anderson is going to take us to Crossroads in Kingston. A wide open space just west of Kingston, Oklahoma, fittingly known to the locals as Crossroads, where highways 32 and 377 cross. You see a lot of truckers and on a pretty day, a few bikes and old friends. But inside this little building on the big prairie is what some call a hamburger heaven. Can they get these off? Two cheeseburgers and a bacon cheeseburger. April Bellaville is one of the ladies heading up the kitchen. I get here at five in the morning uh -huh. and I start cooking the sausage and baking the biscuits. Yeah, they do breakfast too, but today folks, we're here for the burgers and for the company. Meet the owner of Crossroads. Everybody calls me a haircut. <laughs> it's a nickname I got at dear old pal high school back in the 50s, early 50s. My name is Larry Lee. For the past 22 years, the place to find Larry, or haircut, is right behind that cash register, and he says a lot has changed. Yes, ma'am, in 1994, $700 was a good day. I kid you not. But gas was 99 cents back then. Diesel was like 80 cents. Now he's turned what was a little tiny gas station into a booming burger making business. When I bought this out, I had a little old bitty grill, an old electric grills. And we might kick, the feed mill was our main customer. We might cook four or five a day. Then we went to a bigger grill. Then we went to a bigger grill. And now we need a bigger grill. On an average day, they say they crank out 50 to 60 pounds of hamburger meat. April said that comes up to about 90 patties a day. Trying to get them all the same thickness so they'll cook all the same. Haircut said these are not your normal quarter pounders. They make sure every patty is packed with seven ounces of hearty beef made just like mama would. Just like cooking at home, you know. That's right. Always cook with love, always. And thanks to word of mouth, tourists, truck drivers, the craving for the flavor is spreading. People come from Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, all over the country. Truck drivers have spread the word about our hamburgers. Just ask their loyal customers. So why do you come in here? Well, it's close to home. We got good hamburgers. The other stuff too is good. I know it's you're right, I'll beat it all up. <laughs> Try haircuts. Uh, we, have, we have truck drivers that come to our facility a lot, and we send them down here, and they all comment how much they like it. Even if it's not a burger you're craving, these folks can hook you up. So you come into Crossroads Diner, you order a burger, and you see, what do you find? Fried bologna sandwiches. I haven't had one of these since I was a kid, and let me tell you, it looks yummy. Thank you, April. Mmm. <laughs> Hot off the grill. And you can't forget the fresh cut fries or the onion rings. Whether you're here to get your burger on or just see some old friends. The customers are great. They're really great. They come in first. They know me first name. They walk in or like, hello, April. Even Haircut says he's been surprised at the success. Who can explain it? Home cooking. Home cooking, exactly. And most likely, that down home, treat you like family atmosphere. Stop in and see us. Buy some gas for beer, ice, whatever, you know. It, we'll, bet you, we'll be nice to you. Maybe you'll come back. I bet you do.
Discovering Oklahoma, just outside of Kingston. I'm Lisanne Anderson. If you're looking for great places to grab a bite to eat this summer, hop onto our website, travelok.com, and click on where it says dining. You can search by city or town or by the type of cuisine you're craving. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. Yeah, you can get a chicken fried steak that two people takes two people to consume. Great food served by good people, the spot just off I-35 where you can't pass up their down-home cooking. Woody's Chocolates made in Oklahoma City is one of the made in Oklahoma products. But first, sweet treats and fantastic finds, the little shop in Comanche that you just can't miss, up next right here on Discover Oklahoma. Oklahoma Today magazine brings you stunning photography and authentic award-winning stories of home from Oklahoma. The only magazine that covers the entire state, Oklahoma Today showcases what we love about Oklahoma, bringing to you the very best of its people, places, culture, history, and of course, its legendary food. Subscribe now at oklahomatoday.com and get six issues absolutely free. Don't miss a single issue of Oklahoma Today magazine. Welcome back. We're hanging out at Stash. This is a great eclectic little shop near mm -hmm. Maine and Porter in Norman. All kinds of fun locally made items. I love this one. It's a little <laughs> notebook that says, if you dream big, anything can come true. Just kidding. Get back to work. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. And of course, there are locally owned shops like this on main streets all across Oklahoma. And it really comes down to this. There's no excuse for you to not shop local. True enough. Our Lauren Ferrum takes us to a shop not too far from her hometown of Lawton. It's called Mud Creek Creations in Comanche. Mud Creek Creations in Comanche, Oklahoma is the place to go to find vintage, antique, and handmade items for yourself and your home. Owners Bob and Jeanette Kofer opened the store in November of 2014 after many years of being involved in craft shows. I used to build birdhouses, still build birdhouses, a lot of western furniture, and uh, my wife decorates. Uh, we used to do craft shows and we decided to get a building and, and try to have all of our stuff under one roof, quit traveling so much. Now housing 15 vendors and their own handmade creations, Bob and Jeanette say their store is a must stop for fun handmade items. We have a lot of doilies and knitted items, uh, baby items, and lots of wreaths, arrows, just whatever's, whatever's popular for the day. Uh, we have a lot of antiques here, a lot of small antiques, a lot of old antiques. Uh, we have some larger pieces, but we have a lot of uh, refurbished items. We have a lot of painted furniture, a lot of uh, craft work, woodwork. We have Made in Oklahoma products. Woody's Chocolates Made in Oklahoma City is one of the Made in Oklahoma products that Mud Creek Creations carries. They also have lots of products that are handmade by people right here in Comanche and in the surrounding area. The wreaths, the arrows, the wall hangings, a lot of the knitted items are all made here. It's not a big box store, but we have things that the big box stores don't have. Customers come from all over the state and even out of state to find treasures here at Mud Creek Creations. We have people that come from Oklahoma City and they come in and return customers and say, this is my favorite store. They just walk in and they just, they just light up. The one thing to remember about Mud Creek Creations is come see what you've been missing. Discovering Oklahoma, I'm Lauren Verum. If you're looking for one of these great local shops, we can help you find them all in one place on our website, travelok.com. Just click on the town you are interested in and then browse the section that says shopping. Up next on Discover Oklahoma, from Mile High Pies. It's home cooked food. It's just good. What's well, not to like? Yeah, <laughs> the best pies in town. To the best breakfast around, see what else keeps folks coming back to the Comeback Cafe when Discover Oklahoma continues. To the land, and where we belong to is grand. So when we say, yeah, we say, you're doing fine. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, come see for yourself. Well, 
we've had so much fun here looking around, doing a little shopping at this store called Stash, where they also have some very fun locally made t-shirts. I love this one. Kitty of Thunder. I like that one too. And they have a lot of made in Oklahoma products, some of which actually say made, made in Oklahoma. So if you wear this one, there's no doubt about it. To find the store, just go to Maine and Porter right in the heart of Norman. And we're going to the heart of another town. This time it's Perry. And we're going to go to the Comeback Cafe where they've been serving mm -hmm. up great mm -hmm. food for decades. The Comeback Cafe has the feel of a place that's been around forever. Well, specifically 90 years to be exact, the 300 plus pictures on the wall reflect that history. But there are groups of people who also reflect that history. They meet here every day, they eat, drink coffee and visit. They find out what's going on. How long have some though been coming here? Well, probably close, close to 50 years. Probably 30 years, at least. I've been coming here since July 1974. Marilee and Tony Marcias have been the owners of the Comeback Cafe for the past 46 years. Well, they're a lot of fun. They're just like family. And we have the two different groups, the men's group and the girls' group, and uh, then just regular customers. And they, they have so much fun. It starts their day off right, and we love them all. We just like to get together and see what's going on. Of course, politics is many times a topic of conversation. Once in a while we talk politics, but not very often. They, not know, they, don't, they don't know how to vote, so no use talking to them. But teasing and having fun are always a priority. On certain days when we're not talking politics, when we're talking politics, it gets serious. That's not funny. So is there a competitive nature about talking politics with the men? No, because we don't talk to them. They tend to listen to us, but they don't talk to us. Other topics include... Basketball, football, we leave out baseball. Yeah, who's going to buy a coffee? Yeah, buy a coffee? That's the main That's most. the main thing. Most of them try to shirk out of their duty, yeah. <laughs> but, Get out of rotation. Yeah. <laughs> so what really keeps everyone coming back? I think the people. People in the service and the food. You know, it's, it's all of the above. Sometimes it's just the camaraderie of getting together and, and getting your day started off with a laugh. I'm here six days a week. <laughs> <laughs> and good food, good service, and he's here get to see the local people. Days. It's all good food. It's just good. What's not to like? Yeah. <laughs> the best pies in town. We make our own steaks. We cut our own steaks. We make our own um, chicken fried steak. We do the old-fashioned way. It's not doesn't come in frozen. Everything that you get here is going to be made right on the place. Very good. Good. Very good. Yeah, I've seen the breakfast I ate this morning. The best chicken fried steak in the state. And the pork chops are wonderful. The Comeback Cafe has regular customers literally from all over the world, but good food along with good service and friendship are always memorable combinations. And the Comeback Cafe has all of that and more. We're just a family-oriented place, plus we have good food. The Comeback Cafe is closed on Sundays, but every other day of the week they are open at 6 a.m. and serve dinner until 8. On Saturdays, though, they close after lunch at 2. A big thanks to the folks here at Stash for hosting us this week. Again, they're on East Main Street in Norman, just past Porter. This shop is full of all kinds of unique, fun, handmade items. And if you can't make it to Norman anytime soon, guess what? You can shop Stash online at their website, stashok.com. And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, we're headed to the lake. Wait till you see the haul we came home with after a morning of fishing. And another idea for road trippers when it comes to the search for the ultimate dinner worth the drive. We'll show you what they've got cooking in Durant coming up next Saturday night right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Our intrepid Ford Explorer is provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.